Colden was born Phoenix Reeves on May 23, 1988, to Goldia and Lawrence Colden in California. Now, Lawrence was not Phoenix's biological father, and it's unclear the type of relationship that Goldia had with Phoenix's father. But when Goldia met and married Lawrence, he loved Phoenix as if she was his own. Phoenix was raised a portion of her childhood in California, but the family eventually moved to a middle-class neighborhood in Spanish Lake, Missouri, due to Lawrence's job. This is also where Lawrence adopted Phoenix, and she officially became Phoenix Colden. Phoenix growing up was known for being a very quiet but talented and gifted child. She played many instruments and was even the junior fencing champion in her area. Academics were a very serious thing in the Colden household, so they thought it would be best if they homeschooled Phoenix to make sure that she got the best education possible. The Colden household also was a very religious one. They were very dedicated to their church and made sure that Phoenix was involved with church activities as well. All of her parents' hard work paid off when Phoenix started attending University of Missouri. After such a structured life, Phoenix was on her own and even moved into her own apartment with one of her friends. But during her junior year, she moved back home with her parents, which was said to have possibly affected Phoenix, being that she had had a certain level of freedom being 23 and on her own. There were arguments between Phoenix and her parents that over time became more difficult, and her parents started noticing that there was a change in Phoenix. On December 18, 2011, it was a normal day for the family. They all went to church and afterwards went grocery shopping and then eventually went home, as normal. The day went on and everybody went about their regular routines. There was a point where Phoenix went to her car for a moment. After some time, she eventually came back into the house and her father Lawrence was sitting in the living room when he saw Phoenix walk past him and exit the house. He went to look outside and saw Phoenix backing out of the driveway and eventually drove off without giving any information about where she was going, which was unlike her. This would be the last time that he or Goldia would see Phoenix. Now naturally Goldia and Lawrence found her exit with no heads up strange, but they didn't want to panic right away thinking that she may have gone to a friend's house and would be back soon. Time went on and there was no sign of Phoenix, but even though they were still having a strange feeling about her actions, she was a 23-year-old woman. So again, they didn't want to assume the worst. But when the next day came and there was no sign of Phoenix, this is when they knew something was terribly wrong. They tried contacting everyone they knew that might know where she was or possibly had seen her. But they got nothing. Afterwards, they contacted the police, but within speaking with them, there was a bit of a problem. Phoenix was 23 years old, a legal adult, which gave her the right to leave on her own without notifying anybody on where she was going. There was nothing about the situation to the police that gave them indication that something was truly wrong. This left Goldia and Lawrence not knowing what to do since the authorities, at the time, couldn't do anything further. Afterwards, Goldia was advised to request another officer to come out and speak to them, due to the first officer appearing as if he was not that concerned, and she had a feeling that he would not actually put in that report, as promised. And she was right. Another officer came to the home and took the report and sent it in. For the next two weeks, Phoenix parents and friends worked hard putting up flyers for Phoenix with still no word about where she was. But all that would change when two weeks later, it was discovered that Phoenix's vehicle was found in an impound yard in East St. Louis. And what was even worse was that the car was found abandoned on the side of the road on the same day that Phoenix went missing. But it was said that due to her missing persons report being in Missouri and the report of the abandoned vehicle was in Illinois, this is why the connection wasn't made earlier. This brought major concern simply due to the area that the vehicle was found in. 
East St. Louis was considered a bit of a dangerous area. And Goldie and Lawrence would never imagine that she would have any reason to be there. When the vehicle was found, it was said that the car was still running and her purse and shoes were still in the car and the driver's side door was wide open. When the car was found and taken in, the vehicle plates were ran and they were able to obtain the name of the owner, but oddly, no one was contacted about the abandoned vehicle, even though there were so many strange things about the vehicle. After all that had happened and the confusing way that the case was being handled, Goldie and Lawrence tried taking matters into their own hands to get Phoenix's story to the public. They tried to have her story ran on several news outlets, but reached a dead end due to the police not giving the okay for the story to be ran. Now with all that information I just gave you, it's safe to think that it was a possible carjacking or a possible kidnapping. But within the years passing, there would be information that would come to light that will turn this case upside down. It would be discovered later that Phoenix had not been completely honest with her parents on the things that were going on in her life. It was discovered that Phoenix had not been attending school and had not enrolled for the upcoming semester, as her parents thought. But not only that, the apartment that her mother had signed the lease for, for her and her friend to live in, was actually being lived in by Phoenix and a man that she was seeing at the time, named Michael, before she eventually moved back in with her parents. There were other things that were learned later on by some of Phoenix's friends. They stated that at a point she started experimenting with drugs. It was also stated by one of her friends named Akira that Phoenix had spoken before on packing her things and just leaving. But they never knew how serious she may have been. She said that Phoenix appeared on edge and paranoid, paranoid believing that she was being followed. And at one point, she accused Akira of speaking ill of her and her boyfriend. This caused an argument between the two. And at one point within the argument, Phoenix pulled out a knife that Akira knew that she used to carry. Akira said she was unsure of her motives behind pulling out her knife, but she believed that all she was trying to do was scare her. The two friends made up at one point after. But one of the most shocking things that was discovered was that Phoenix had two different phones. One of her cell phones was on her parents' plan, but she had another cell phone that she paid for on her own that her parents had no knowledge of. It's believed that one of the reasons she had the second phone was so that she could communicate with another man that she had been seeing on the side that her boyfriend didn't know anything about. And oddly enough, both of the men had the same name of Michael. The authorities got in touch with the second Mike's ex-girlfriend and she revealed to them that he did have a history of being abusive, even to her, in which she reported and had a restraining order against him. She stated that she had her suspicions that he might have had something to do with Phoenix's disappearance. She had this feeling because she noticed that Mike, number two, had been doing a lot of research on Phoenix's case and even checking missing persons websites about her. She found it to be strange at the time and bothersome and after a while questioned him about it. She said he originally told her that he was doing research for educational purposes, but eventually confessed that this was a woman that he had been seeing and had slept with at one point. After expressing her anger about this, she said his reaction was strange and that he responded to her saying, quote, why are you worried about a dead girl? End quote. Now it's unclear if he made that statement just assuming that she was or if there was something that he knew. But the story doesn't end there. It was about two years ago when things started coming to light about the scene where Phoenix's vehicle was found, when the Oxygen Network covered Phoenix's case. It was reported that some of the details about the state of the car were false. It was stated in the beginning that when the vehicle was found, it was on the side of the road facing the wrong direction. This turned out to be false. It was also said that the vehicle was not on when it was found and there were no personal items such as her shoes or her purse in the car, as earlier reported. 
The car was simply on the side of the road, abandoned, and there were no signs of struggle or that someone had been forcibly removed from the car. But one of the most disturbing and concerning things that was discovered and shown on the oxygen special was that there was a video that Phoenix recorded about a month before her disappearance. In the video, she expressed how unhappy she was. She explained how she didn't feel like she could express her emotions to others in fear of coming off wrong. She went on to state that the only person that never let her down was herself and that she couldn't remember the last time that she was ever truly happy. It was very clear from the video that there was something going on in Phoenix's life that had her at a crossroads. Ever since the beginning, there have been many different theories that had been made of what could have possibly happened to Phoenix. So let's go over a few. Due to the area of Phoenix's car location, it was believed that she may have been kidnapped and sold into human trafficking. This is believed because it was said by Missouri Sheriff's Association Rep. Nathan Tate that the St. Louis metro area was one of the top 20 areas that had been known for human trafficking in the United States. There are some that believe that her life could have been taken the same day that she went missing, being that ever since that day, there's been no activity on her bank account or her social media pages. It's believed by her parents that due to the secrets that were kept from them, that she may have gotten involved with the wrong crowd, and they believe that someone knows where their daughter is or what happened to her. But one of the most consistent theories is that she ran away on her own, that she had become tired of the fighting between her and her parents and some of the people around her and left without warning to start a new life elsewhere where no one knew her. For whatever the case is, Phoenix has been missing without a trace for the past 10 years. Her parents have continued to fight to find their daughter, and Goldia has spoken at many different events, telling the haunting tale of what happened to her daughter. But to this day, the missing persons case of Phoenix Colden remains unsolved.